How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Top Chef Fantasy League, the podcast that confuses both sports fans and reality competition show watchers. I am your host and commissioner, Mike Cablon. With me are my co-hosts, Sierra Kato and Ify Wadiwe. Hello. Hello. Hey. We are trying a new format tonight uh, because we just watched the show mere yeah. minutes ago. Ooh. So we haven't had time to gather our thoughts. This is going to be real unorganized. Completely raw. We just mainlined Top Chef. Fully, Truly. Uh, and Last Chance Kitchen all at once. Yeah. So yeah. it's either fresh in our mind or we haven't had enough time to process. Right. Yeah. yeah. We'll see which way it goes. Um, Alicia is following us on Instagram. That's fun. That's just a small update. Oh. More and more chefs are starting to follow us. We yes. got Alicia this week. Hi, Alicia. Thanks for hey, how's it going? following Ball? and listening. Good luck. <laughs> really thought you had something there yeah. uh let's dive in because that's what the show did they just skipped right over the quick fire wow. yeah no quick fire this week oh i should also add that if he i'm gonna call you out was late <laughs> so anything there you he hear is. him say about the first half hour of the show he's just gonna go yeah because Crazy. he wasn't there he didn't see it Look, yeah, I was coming from a shoot. We all planned because, you know, and, and, and this is good because it actually is a perfect segue into what I was going to say. So far, we've been, you know, tapping in. If there's something in the show, we do it here. And you would think, oh, they have no nothing. No, they went on a road trip on this yes. episode. Oh. I, I definitely had to be filled in for or when I got <laughs> here late. And Mike, you're going to be traveling. So oh, you, I, that's, yeah, true. that's true. Going on your own road I'm trip. I'm hitting the road tomorrow. Basically, yeah. kind of so, an air trip. Yeah, an air, air trip. trip. Yeah. Uh, so, so that that's what we did this week. But yes, no, I, a shoot ran late, and I got here <laughs> halfway through it. But that was great because there wasn't a quick fire challenge, so I didn't. You miss really one. didn't miss it. You missed a lot of like bonding, but not a yeah. lot of action. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, so we learn right away that the elimination challenge uh, is that the whole show is moving to Madison. We're out of Milwaukee now. Mm. They're taking the Frank Lloyd Wright trail uh, to see all of the works of Frank Lloyd Wright. Danny interjects by saying that his dad is an architect right. mm. and his dad's work is in the realm of Frank Lloyd Wright. So he feels very comfortable here. Wow. He said he has a passion for architecture and that ends up paying off for him later on. Yes. Tom explains that a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture is inspired by this notion of compress and release. Mm. You know, a nice low ceiling, and then it opens into a really big space. Yes. And so the challenge is to do two dishes inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright with the theme of duality, and it is a team challenge. That also means it is a double elimination, Ooh. which we have talked about many a time on this podcast. Yeah. Real easy to hide behind uh, a strong team member or get sandbagged by a weak team member. This is the most dangerous. It is. Oh, yeah. Although I would argue that this week, neither of those things happened. I think yeah. right. the bottom was like bad and the top was good. I think yes. it helps when they're able to, and I know we'll get to this, pick their own partners because yes. you see that the strong ones tend to kind of go together mm -hmm. and then maybe people who are not really sure kind of end up landing together and then maybe they don't end up working yeah. too well together right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh the only notable thing i'll say here michelle and charlie decide to join a team and right away we find out that michelle's immunity from last week extends to charlie so they are both safe yes. this week I, I can't tell you how good it is seeing both my team members yes you know using it on each other because i'm like okay cool so i know two are safe because you know it's been a bloodbath for <laughs> i think the first time this season you don't have to sweat this episode yeah no yeah, i was yeah. huge completely dry uh watching this, this episode <laughs> first time <laughs> for the first time the completely first time. dry uh, so everyone hops into their BMW X1s. Everyone take a shot. That's that's real obvious product placement for yep. BMW there. We find out that our guest judges this week are Dominique Crenn, who is a very notable three-star Michelin chef. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you at home who aren't foodies, she was the culinary consultant on The Menu. Maybe you saw that movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. How funny. Yeah. Um, she just looks to me like... She's out of Ratatouille or, <laughs> yeah. you know, Devil Wears Prada on the French side of the magazine. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Very chic. Very, oh, yeah. yeah. With those suits, too. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Intimidating mm -hmm. is, yeah. I think, the key. Definitely. Yeah. Which I, once again, you know, and I don't want to come off as anti-French. <laughs> Every too late. week it's with too this late. guy. <laughs> but I definitely feel like that's the vibe they try and have where it's like, um, I can, I can 
end your whole career, right? Oh, now, yeah. You know? People were nervous to yeah. serve her. Exactly. Well, we learned that Kevin had Dominique Crenn as a judge when he was on uh, Top Chef France, and they had a, a very nice rapport. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they couldn't wait to speak French. They couldn't wait yeah. <laughs> to have that that repertoire. Wow. Oh, wow. look who's speaking French. Yeah, I know. yeah you okay. get in there. You can talk to Dominique. <laughs> Our other guest judge is Buddha Lowe, champ, yeah. two time champion of, yeah. of Top Chef. Seen both the seasons. I mean, it was pretty recent, you know. Sure. I mean, and yeah. uh, always, always a hilarious. Like he would always bring his little molds and Famous make something for bringing beautiful. Molds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good to see him again. And he was. I thought he would be, you know, more intense because he's an intense contestant. And mm-hmm. so I thought, oh, now it's like when the the frat boy comes back after Ben Hayes, and he's like, yeah. hey, freshman, <laughs> you know, hey, get you know, whatever you guys do. Um, but he was actually very. He seemed very sweet yeah. and. Uh, Reasonable, reasonable, yeah, yeah. Came back at the end to uh, give the chefs a little pep talk. True, yeah, yeah. yeah, That was nice. We'll get to that. Um, And I would say that the next twenty minutes of the show is just a lot of road tripping. It really (laughs) felt like okay. Every week, I feel like there is a chunk of the episode where you go, that's where the extra 15 minutes is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It does. It felt a little long. Maybe they're waiting for Iffy. Maybe they're like, yeah, they're hey, like, listen, we he's, we gotta he's stall. on the road. Yeah, we yeah, got to stall, stall. He's in traffic. We have to wait for him to come. But also, I feel like they probably get huge tax breaks shooting in these specific places like a Wisconsin. Sure. That, that sure. wants you know people to move there and tourists. Right. So... They need all these like. They you think like, it was okay. like contractually obligated time? I think like you so. gotta have twenty minutes of Wisconsin time. Oh yeah, and they, they, they there's like a <laughs> right. certain like there's a an agreed upon amount of time that's like Wisconsin Wisconsin like beauty shots that they need to have across the whole season. They're like, we got a road trip, we can knock it out <laughs> this yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we look at a bunch of Frank Lloyd Wright works. I want to point out that Amanda, when talking to one of the tour guides, goes, when was Frank Lloyd Wright's birthday? And then the woman gives the answer, and she goes, mm, a Gemini. Amazing. It's like, <laughs> Amanda, you're really playing your own character game here. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was I, a great moment. I love it. I, I also, you know, another Frank Lloyd, White, Frank Lloyd Wright fact I wanted to drop is I, uh, on the couch, was like, he's a playwright. Right. And uh, that was wrong. I was <laughs> mixing it up with uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh, yes. Another yes. Lloyd middle Very name. Very uh, yeah. different. Throw that Lloyd Dif- in the middle. Be- yeah. Three name Lloyd middle name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I would have been really surprised because he's so busy building these beautiful buildings. It's hard to yeah. do two things yeah, really prolific. well. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I imagine if you're just, you're like, oh, this arch remind, makes me think of cats. What if they were <laughs> giant <laughs> oh, Sure, if they yeah. Were, in between projects, go make yeah. a hit. <laughs> it's like it's really hard to like make a living as a full time architect. You got to wait oh, for the next yeah. commission. So right. in between, yeah. you pen a whole musical. I yes. mean, yeah, and then I guess that makes money. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Could, notoriously can. easy to make money right, in Broadway. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the best way. So the chefs get to the drafting room where Frank Lloyd Wright did his work and they start planning out their menus. Already we start to see a rift between Alicia and Kalina. Oh my God. There's I mean, a... yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, I think you're going to say this, but like during the whole time we were like, oh God, they keep yeah. talking to them and we're like, okay, maybe it's the thing where, because obviously I have Alicia, you had Kalina, so mm-hmm. it's like, maybe it's the thing where they're going to twist it at the end. They're just showing yes. them struggling because it was so obvious. If you show a person a lot throughout the episode... It's hard to tell whether they're going to do good or bad, but it's right. like for sure something's going to happen. Something significant. They're not going to be in the middle and never talk to again. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 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 So it was definitely like, oh, maybe holding out a little bit, but then you know, no. it just kept getting worse. Yeah. Because uh-huh. they were. I was going to just say quickly that they were fighting over little things. The one I wrote was. Yeah. One was like, we should call it land and water. And the other one's like, how about land and sea? And it's like, you shouldn't <laughs> so, be arguing over yeah. sea versus water. Yeah, that's never. already kind of a bad sign. Yeah. yeah that's kind of what it, what I was gonna touch on is the fact that yeah it, it, there i feel like there were a few of these duality picks that either were too simplistic or just too what are you even talking about mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. strange yeah it seemed like a tough one and like yeah and even now that you reiterate the land and water land and sea i think there was like maybe i don't know who it was but i'm leaning maybe alicia and look i'm she's on my team but who where it's like you're if it's 
if you are particular, it is hard to work with someone else. And maybe they're both particular, but it just seemed like there was no giving. And, yeah. and it was all yeah. like, hey, this is what, you know, a sea and, a sea and water being like the, the yeah. beginning. It's like somebody should just be like, yeah, yeah, okay, water. If right. you want to do water, right. you know. This is a classic. This happens in like every field of work, you know what I mean? Which is you kind of have like two personalities that don't mesh well. Yes. Ugh, and you could see it right away, which is hard to watch unfold for the whole episode. On the other hand, Amanda and Dan both bonded over being nerds. They call them self-professed nerds. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. And, and dubbed they... <laughs> themselves Damanda. <laughs> Which, which I immediately, I had already thought, oh, what would be their name? You know, thinking ahead, thinking like we're going to do the podcast after. Yeah, yeah. I had landed on Amandan, which, which I is think so makes much sense. better. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then they're like, and we're Demanda. And then they, it was cute. They agreed on that really you know stupid what? name. I love <laughs> so I guess they are doing great. But uh, but yeah, the nerds thing was cute. They showed little pictures of them being nerds, yep. which is funny. Like yeah. imagine the producer being like, hey, so can you get any pictures of you guys being nerds? And then yeah. being like, yeah, I've got a whole album. Yeah. Any pictures? <laughs> of me perfect yeah. yeah all right so we got demand <laughs> uh everyone agrees that Roska and danny are the biggest threat um because they are very technical they both worked at the french laundry together both and on my team both on your team yeah. which we'll get to in the points you had a real <laughs> big week for sierra uh but yeah so we we start to get into the cook Roska and danny their their duality is similar and different or is they said very uh marketing lingo y seemingly similar, strikingly different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They really put a, a spin on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then in their cook, they're they are do they're like living up to their own stereotype. Everyone's like, oh, those are the snipers, gotta watch out for them. And sure enough, they're calling out like, hey, this has got to be two point five millimeters wide. You know what I mean? They're like yeah. precise with their cuts. Filleting the cucumber, mm -hmm. like perfect yes. parallel crazy. Uh but it did work out. They had these real dual dishes a scallop mousse and a, a doll quenelle. Uh, it comes out right away, and Tom says this feels architectural. Yeah, yeah I because mean, because of those precise cuts. Yeah, they have those little lines, and it's like mm -hmm. that. You one's know, green, they're seeing one's those red. slats. Yeah, it was it was really a strong start. Yeah, they don't play. They, do, <laughs> oh, no. they definitely they do run, not play. but they don't play. Right, I know they run. They 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 drove. Uh, I might be going out of order here, but that's because we just watched the episode. My yeah. notes aren't organized. That's okay. Uh, Michelle and Charlie end up doing chicken and egg as their duality, which, give me your thoughts on this. <laughs> Is that a duality? It feels like two things that are said frequently in the same sentence. <laughs> But it's not sure. like saying like up and down right. or east and west. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, chicken I egg. feel like the it makes sense when they say the what came first, the chicken or the egg. Right. But I also agree. It's like, yeah, it, it feels like a stretch. <laughs> One turns feel, into the other. It feels like a first draft pick <laughs> as far as like ideas for what to do. And it also feels like an excuse for to do what they do best. Yes. Sure. Which, sure. to their credit, hey. they did. Yeah. Uh, it also feels like... <laughs> <laughs> they're chefs and they just pick two ingredients. Do you know what I mean? Well, yes. yeah. Everyone else is well. like, here's like a conceptual theme and they're like, how about two things in the kitchen? Right, that yeah. we can definitely do. And then, I mean, also I was like, I think that's one of them mentioned like, kind of reminds me of like egg or something. Yes, when they, they were, were looking watching. at a building. They're yeah, like, that's like egg. And but like, then <laughs> I did, they never said that at the thing. Maybe they cut it out at the table, but I was just like, well, did they want yeah, because, to because what happened about? is they said it at the table and they asked for an explanation and it was like 30 minutes long and they were like, we got to uh, cut it yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not. Um, but yeah, I agreed. I think it's a little bit uh, whatever. Like, but I, I guess I could see, you know, if you're really thinking like they look very different, so you sure. could have very different visuals. <laughs> yeah. So that's what they presented quality wise. When it came time to judging, it seemed like to me the overall impression I got was that the judges were like, "This is technically bad, but it tastes good enough that they're in the middle." You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Michelle's was like good. Like I think the the main thing was maybe Charlie's eggshell was kind of weird and yeah. then they didn't have the a lot of egg weird. in it. They said that Michelle's biscuit was crumbly. Oh right, which I is about easy that. to do with a biscuit. Yeah. Common yeah. mistake. Sure, sure. But it is a thing where they were like, but it's it is a good enough biscuit that we don't really care that much. Right, yeah. and they had two good bites right away. So yes. they're probably craving that after having some. Not yeah, so and, good and stuff. it's lines uh -huh. that that well, not it's lines like that that make me realize that Michelle most definitely is. A, a sleeping dragon because yes. <laughs> yeah. when you're fucking up and still getting compliments, it's yes. like, oh, yeah. When oh, your food is so right. undeniably good that even like technical issues do not affect yeah. 
how people feel about it. Yes, that's you're a good something's chef. good in there. I mean, even Dominique Crenn was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, I feel like I can feel the love in the cooking yes. or something." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like it came through, and I think she was specifically talking about Michelle. So it was like, "Oh, yeah. and you just got here, so it's not like you've seen her exactly. best, right?" right? Like, it is definitely, yeah. You, that's such a good point. Yeah, you just got here and you're doing it. Also. We know how the French look down on Americans. So <laughs> here we go. All right, so everyone, let's hear them out, so- everyone. <laughs> Still going. Uh, okay. This is also where I should point out that Charlie had trouble with his ISI, which, as yeah. we know, loses him zero point two five points. Oh, I thought we gained points. Now, no, I'm not as happy. <laughs> no. no, trouble with a pressure cooker or an ISI is minus point two five. I don't know why I remembered it as a positive. <laughs> I was pleased that I ha- every time, because every episode, all the chefs use an ISI, and I'm like, one of these has to fail at some point. It yeah. happens it's gotta happen. at least once a season. Oh, yeah. And this particular challenge, every dish felt like it had a little mousse or a little dollop of something on it, and I was waiting for it to happen. I'm, it, it's such nice payoff to see someone. Yeah. Right, right. It's like uh, a real know. hot potato. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Dan and Amanda, or as they would say, <laughs> Damanda. As they would say. <laughs> Chose to go with poverty and wealth as a duality. I think this is a really nice one. Sure, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It fit in with the theme because yes. they had visited the um, like low-income housing. Or mm-hmm. uh, Burnham Block. Burnham Block. Um, and I felt like it was, you know, pretty clever with the, well, you know, it kind of reminded me of was a last chance kitchen when they did the like low, you know, like kind of like lesser ingredients, oh, high end sure, yeah. recipe. So even though they hadn't seen that aspect of it, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was a much clearer concept. I think clearer than everybody concept. else uh-huh. seemed like good execution. I mean, even speaking to what you just said, when Dan was like, this dish is three ingredients, just looking at right. it, the way it looked, I'm like, there's no way it's three ingredients. Yes. It looks very great. So well uh-huh. done. Uh, but the judges loved it. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to point out that Dan was doing his little moose thing. And he said, that's some Buddha stuff right there, which oh. is funny that like, the chefs are so starstruck by Buddha. Like, Buddha yeah. is so notorious in his style. Yes. That people are like, oh, this is like a Buddha dish. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Even as recent as, yeah, the winner from not too long ago. It's already got his style down. Yeah. Manny and Kevin choose to do dark and light, which I think is classic duality. That That's yeah. more yeah. on theme. Their execution oh, yeah. wasn't great, but the story was dark and light. So they do a, a chicken and mushroom fiori. Which I've never heard of. The spiral pasta yeah. looks so good. Right. I want to I find a restaurant that does that. I know. Beautiful. I wanted to, to taste that so Yeah, bad. it looked really good. And then Kevin trots out what he does best, which is uh, a pastry. He does a warm praline chocolate mousse, bitter chocolate, twill. It looked delicious. Mm. Looked delicious being the key here because, <laughs> as Tom said, it's a good story, but it doesn't have a happy ending. Because <laughs> the pasta, <laughs> pasta was not well made. Wow. The farce had the texture of tuna fish, said Kristen Ooh. Kish. Ooh, never good. Uh, so, you know, my boy, man, I mean, both of these boys are my boys. Oh, <laughs> well, we missed this up top. They said. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. They said that because they were both in the bottom last week that they've coined themselves the power bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a joke they made once and then promptly never made again for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it Look, definitely fit. It definitely them fit. Them two together yeah. and they're both, yeah, they're both, they're both strapping both boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I will say, yeah, you know, Manny, I, 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 I think I'm p- picking up what you're putting down and I hope you find, you know, you get those <laughs> pings on, you, you hope know. people are sliding into his DMs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, I and mean, it was funny too, Kevin even was like, well, Manny was doing something and the, That's right, the whole was table moving. was shaking. Like Kevin was like, that guy's, that guy's even bigger than he is yeah. as far as, you know, muscles and yeah. <laughs> they're, both, they're both big. But big guys. Big handsome yeah, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Manny want us to let know Tattooed he's a power guys. bottom. Don't let that <laughs> muscle fool you. Right. Alas, he could not make good pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> but the team was saved by Kevin's dessert, which was really good. Yes. I loved it. Once again, I think that lands you firmly in the middle. If one, yeah. one dish is good, one yeah. dish is bad, it's double elimination. You're kind of saved by your your better teammate there. Yeah. Laura and Savannah decide to do comfortable, uncomfortable as their duality. Hmm. When this popped up on the screen, <laughs> I was like, what are we doing here? And this what is your we... first introduction to it because you yeah, walk in, you don't right. get to hear them the genesis what of the idea. That? You just sit down, you see the little lower third. Yeah, I see duality, <laughs> comfortable, uncomfortable, <laughs> And I and yeah, I think I did immediately turn to you and say, "What? What is <laughs> this? What, is, <laughs> what do they mean?" 
a definite weird thing of like they said that and then when they presented the dish they're like well we were talking about compression and release and how Mm -hmm. when you're compressed you're uncomfortable and you're released you are comfortable which okay then i'm like okay i can kind of visualize it more but then but then it's like, whoa, make sure you come back to that comfortable uncomfortable because that's probably not what's coming yes. from the compre- – there's no compression release in here. You yeah. know what I mean? So there, it was maybe like that was already complicated and then it got overcomplicated. Well, it just reminded me of like early improv days when you would get like, you know, maybe a suggestion or you would get like, you know, a story from the audience and someone would do a scene and you go, oh, what, what part of the story <laughs> How did, you, did yeah. you get that from? Yeah, and they're like, too oh, far well, to well, because, you know, it's like when the, when the, when the bing bong happens to the blip blow <laughs> and then the zing zang. And it was like, right. I, okay, I don't know why you expected all of us to take right, it. Sure. Yeah. That's what I feel like with the comfortable, uncomfortable because like, on paper, I see why you would think like the compression and then the opening up would be comfort and discomfort. But I think even with the compression, it's still a home. It's still somewhere right. you have to walk yeah. through. I don't think it's discomfort. I think it's just like a change in shape. Right. Which like big and large. You know, you can make sure, it that sure. simple. Yeah. They did say, yeah, they offered that one up top. But yeah. They yeah. went with comfortable Big and large are the same thing. Like that. <laughs> small, and small and large. large. Small. I yeah, yeah. I didn't <laughs> even catch that. <laughs> big and large. I mean, yeah. big and large. Large sounds bigger than yeah. big. I yeah, think. actually, I take everything back. When you're under pressure, you can. It does. It's really hard. We could never. Pressure. We could never. Are you a fan of pattern game? <laughs> we can take a detour into improv. Did you ever do improv stuff? Or are you strictly oh, stand up? Um, no, I took some, some classes. Okay. okay. But I don't know if I know pattern game. Well, oh, yeah. it's a good way to get from A to C. Yeah. And it, it spells it out for the audience so everyone knows how you got from the suggestion to whatever premise oh, you're doing. Cool. Mm-hmm. And I always hated it. But I do see the value in spelling out for the audience. Hey, we're going to do a scene based off your suggestion. Here's how we got there. Yeah. But also spelling it out for your scene pr- partners for the exact reason right. we just went through all that. Where it's like <laughs> knife. Sharp. So sharp. Yeah, uh, you're like, what? Needles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, well, we know you got that. And I'm glad because how the hell did you get that? Uh, anyway. Is this fun for the audience when we <laughs> yeah, detour into improv, one of the worst art forms in the world? <laughs> yeah. we, hey. we detour away from one of the most popular shows on television to talk about improv comedy. Yeah, yeah. I think Everyone's it makes it because, it. especially if people, because, you know, brother, son. Brother Son sure. had a huge improv state. And, I feel like and a lot Brother of people, Son is a huge hit, as we all know. Yeah, I, look, I, it should be. If, you watch, if you're watching this like 10 years in the future, Brother Son got canceled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, a month right. ago. I heard yeah. it was popular, but then just it's hard to get a well, second season. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's Netflix is so bad at like pushing shows. Like If you think of every like Netflix smash outside of Stranger Things, which I think early days if I remember correctly it's all word of mouth yes. like Bird Box right. blew up because of the memes yeah. everything <laughs> everything on Netflix is a smash because it is like highly clippable things that people will go on like even like you know friend of the pod Nicole Byer what's up you're not listening um, <laughs> nailed it like yeah, it is yeah. like it, it was so funny the, so funny the fucked up dishes so you could post it online and people right. are like what show is this right. like all shows are doing their own marketing, and then when one doesn't do well, it's like you had Michelle Yeoh, yeah. who's like one oh. of the biggest names, and you're not putting it all over yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 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 It was it, it is billboards. probably a phenomenon, but the connection, the reason I brought it up <laughs> yeah. is because it talks about food a lot. It's yes. like a, it has a big oh, food yeah. through line. Yeah. And so I think a lot of y'all who would be listening to this probably watch The Brother's Son and also would uh, be like, what's that improv? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, I literally just did the A to C that I, we were just making that fun of. That was great. This is, That's, this is a master class like, yeah, on improv. Yeah, I like the Top Chef Fantasy League Brother's Son crossover. Yeah. Where Maybe where that'll be yet. what we do once the, the season of Top Chef wraps oh, yeah. to keep this podcast going. We'll just Watch talk about The Brother's Son. Canceled yeah. Canceled Netflix shows. Yeah. That didn't yeah. Yeah. enough marketing or, or we'll, we'll do a chef watch along or we'll watch the oh, chef tv show sure yeah. oh you know they opened the uh the chef we'll get back to the show in a second we they <laughs> opened the chef uh food truck really the mm-hmm. the food truck from the movie chef that makes the yeah. the cuban sandwiches oh. is open in i think vegas oh nice oh. And it's possible to get a john favreau uh cuban sandwich no anyway where were we Oh, I wrote oh. that there is an extended shot of Morton Salt, but nobody said like this is the Morton Salt challenge. So yeah. I oh, just like yeah. I think that Morton pays for like a a lesser tier of sponsorship. Yeah, I, right, right. Let's yeah. Uh, you know, I know we're trying to 
get through this, but I do feel <laughs> we're like we're never going to make it through this. Episode. There, <laughs> there's a level of sponsorship that is that because the amount of red mill kind of subliminal marketing. Sure. That I've seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's one thing to like see it and it's like, oh, you're cooking with it, but it's always like camera open to camera. Right. When right. we see Label a red out. mill. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, Paying some money, yeah, yeah, the yeah, red yeah. mill because yeah. there are other items that we don't even know they're using. Yeah. Sure. Like we, you said about Wisconsin, the Morton Salt shot was like a steady five second. Like I feel like it was a contractually uh, yeah. obligated five second shot I'm of just that. the label of Morton Salt. Yeah, that subliminal messaging, I totally uh, succumb to that. Like I think that's actually sometimes oh, yeah. more powerful because you're like not hit over the head by it, right. but you're yeah. like, oh, if that's what the chefs are using. Okay, I should okay, get that yeah. next time. You yeah, know? that's what they like. Uh, sub- non subliminal mes- messaging also works. Cause I once again really want a BMW X1. Oh, I yeah, really yeah. want a BMW X1. If anyone Please. at BMW is listening, I really want a BMW X1. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, Kalina and Alicia. Okay, yeah, this is the last scene we should talk about, right? They decide on land and sea, not land and water. <laughs> For some reason. And they both mess up. Kalina, she says she's making this crust off, off memory and it needs to freeze for a couple hours and Alicia's kind of like... I. I will stand Alicia's sort of like skeptical side eye. She's kind of <laughs> rolling her eyes. And she's also trying to get past that every time she's like, hey, we're a team. We should be working together. And she's like, I feel like we're not working together. But she is visibly annoyed for the whole challenge. And I do kind of love that just personality wise. Oh, yeah. Just like not feeling it. And because there, it is always funny when you have someone who is very much, very obviously not helping <laughs> you know not yeah. helping the the drama of it all but still being like we're, we're a team and it's like yeah you want to like lead by example at all sure yeah. yeah 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 i did like it was i was interested in like the fact that she did go and she's like oh god you know why would i go over there like there was a lot of like muttering to oneself for both of them mm-hmm. and then it's like oh what's gonna happen when they meet and then it was like we need to be acting as a team okay that ended up being all right you know what i mean but it's like if that's brewing in the back of your head while you're even if you're saying the right words it's like yeah, it's gonna come it through right yeah. and you know I'm, I'm wondering if it's kind of like it's definitely personalities clashing i'm like alicia maybe has been a private chef for a while so i don't know if she's like not oh, really that's been a good point. I didn't yeah. you know about working that. in a in the group setting in a I don't know how right. private chefs work, but um, you know maybe there's a little bit of that. Um, and I mean, look, all the contestants are are used to often being on as executive chefs and having their word yes. be the one. So I think it's hard for these alphas to like take a backseat sometimes. But um, but yeah, I mean, some people did it, so clearly it's some possible. Some people did it; they did not. Both of their dishes got eviscerated by the chefs. For the mushroom cheesecake that Kalina made, Tom said the bottom crust you could put in an MRE, which I think is what does that mean? Uh, an MRE is a meal, a meal ready. ready to eat. It's like military food. Oh, it's oh like, right. That's why I said hard tack. And yes, like, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah. MRE. It's like food that doesn't expire, so you can send I it mean, out in the field and it'll do yeah. no, right, right, right. no soldier ever likes eating it. You just yeah. eat it because you have to because that's your rations. Yeah, yeah. And it's that safe. is, I think, one of the worst things you can say to a chef is <laughs> yeah, this is MRE Christ. level food. Right. It's only for sustenance. Uh, for Alicia's Agua Chile, Tom says it's like a first year culinary student trying to do a fancy dish, which oh, is also. Oh, that's a, quite an insult. He was coming hard was in this really episode, but so funny. We laugh every time because he's just really seems to have amped up the, the insult meter, but you know, <laughs> that's what you got to do. It's season 21, you know? Yeah. You got to keep the ratings up somehow. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's like Tom treats every week. Like it's sweeps week. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that an old I, reference? I'm not sure if okay. I know, but I believe you. <laughs> Do they still do that? Is that still what a is thing? That? Sweeps. Okay. In the 90s, every TV show had their big stunt episode where it's like, we got a huge celebrity or like, they're finally going to kiss oh, or whatever oh, oh, because oh. it was Sweeps Week, which was like the week when Nielsen ratings mattered the most. Oh, okay. So it was like, we need the most amount of people to tune in during this week. And some shows would explicitly say it on air. They'd, like, they would talk yeah, God, about please. how important Sweeps uh-huh. Week is, and how they would funny. say it to, you know, Michael Jackson or whoever the big celebrity that week was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I did not I did not know that term, but yes. I yeah. feel like that makes total sense. There's yeah. always got to be, like... So you're saying he's, like... <laughs> every week, every week, Tom is, like, dialing up, like, the like the, sh- the whole... Like, the show being canceled or not hinges on whether or not he can maintain an <laughs> yeah. audience of 10 million people. Perfect, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's <laughs> yeah. really doing it. There's not a big discussion from the judges about who the winners and the losers are because they're like so clearly just this was you and 
you have to understand how stark it had to have been for them to not even try and build on the drama. They're like, yeah. no, this is what it is. Right. Let's just get straight to it. And it and is kind did. of a bummer because it feels like a waste of both Dominique Crenn and Buddha Lowe. Oh, I yeah. know. Yeah. Because yeah, I would right. like to hear their input on dishes, but everyone just kind of sat back and went, that meal sucked, right? Yeah. Right. They were like, yeah, all yeah. in agreement. And then I think even in the deliberation or whatever, in the waiting room, all the contestants were like still kind of recovering from being yeah. done. And then it was like, oh shoot, Kristen's here, you know? Yes, I yeah. think they were shocked to see her because it was a fast Because decision. it was so fast. Mm-hmm. There was no time to stew in the stew room. Right, right. So, so Kristen walks uh-huh. in and says, we would like to see Danny and Rossica and Kalina and Alicia and then leaves the room and immediately all the chefs look around like, well, we all know what's about to happen. I mean, yeah, yeah it's so clear. Yeah, it was it was it was the most <laughs> almost anticlimactic on all sides where everyone yeah. was like, "Yep, that's that's how the cookie crumbled." Yeah. Or in Kalina's case, did not crumble because it was frozen solid. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Ten out of ten. Thank you. I mean, um, I'm willing to give you a point for that. Yeah, I don't that feel good, good about it because Kalina cries on her way out of the oh. steward room yeah, to the judges' yeah. table, which is hard to watch. But anyway, yeah. they know. They get out there. There isn't even a lot of like lead up. They just go, Kalina and Alicia, please pack your knives and go. Uh, the aguachile was bad. The cheesecake was oh, bad. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. we get a little, I wasn't sure, a little like voice break crack from Kristen on the pack yeah, of knives. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was sweet. And yeah. I, you know, I was like, oh, I mean, I was, I, I kind of was surprised because it's still early in the season, you know, mm-hmm. like, but, like, you know, but not, not as cold as a Padma pack your knives. Yeah, and I know. <laughs> yeah, I feel I, like in 20 seasons or 19, I guess, Padma only shed a tear like a handful of times oh, sure. like you could tell when she was affected she was like I don't want to send you right. home but I yeah, have to no, send you home was, yeah. you know and I think it's just the different connection right like Padma has always just been the host and uh, and like as the host it's like this is how it rolls whereas you know Christian Kish knows how they feel yeah has she's, been been in there. Their shoes. she's been there so like it like I think even the earliness is what made her crack so much yeah. where it's like oh, oh I know this is when it sucks yeah. oh interesting you yeah know. yeah yeah and feeling like they really they it was their fault maybe yeah. rather than going home for like hey right. I did my best you know they're mm-hmm. like I didn't prove myself yet both of them they're yeah. probably oh, right. down on that mm-hmm. so even though Danny and Roska both win the challenge there is still a favorite dish because they can't give immunity to two people and it ends up being Roska so Roska gets I'm immunity fine. next week and she gets really emotional because she's cooking the South Indian food and she's like, people don't get it, and the the judges got it, and she feels really good, and that's it's a really nice, oh, yeah. uplifting moment. Very sweet. But then Kristen comes in with Buddha at the end of the episode, and kind of gives all the chefs a little talking to, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, y'all gotta step up because that meal was bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and Buddha's even there. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you know I think. I guess I, I was wondering if like did they need to fill extra time because there was no deliberation like or was it because they're just like this was I feel like actually it was bad. that bad okay. yeah, yeah. I, I feel like was... they don't do this that often and... they're go ahead oh no sorry I didn't mean to cut you off there have only been a couple times when after a challenge the judges have come in and I think it's it's nice that Kristen and Buddha both did it because like you said. <laughs> They've done this job yeah. before. So yeah. it feels less like mom and dad yelling at you. It's more like your older siblings being like, hey, you got to step it up for mom and dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's only been I the most notable example I can think of. I can't remember what season. There was one season where they did Restaurant Wars over again. Do you oh, remember that? Oh, kind I of. I vaguely remember there that. There was a season where basically Tom Colicchio came in after they had eaten at both restaurants and went, that was so bad <laughs> that we're going to do Restaurant Wars again. Oh, my God. And both teams had to, like, reconfigure their menus and dishes. And that's, like, the most notable example. And that's, like, the one out of maybe three times I can think of where the judges came back after the meal and were like, hey, you got to do better next time because this is Top Chef and it's not good TV if everyone is bad. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, my, my theory is just that, you know, a lot of them had a hard time with the last challenge and then this one happened. I think that, it, it yeah, they were like, let's give you just a little quick talking to and say, it's time to step it up. Yeah. All right. And yeah. then Amanda was like, thank, thank you for yeah, talking to Total that's teacher's <laughs> pet. Total nerd. She Leave it up it. to that nerd title <laughs> jeez louise thank 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 you it's like we needed this yes yes <laughs> no i love amanda though yeah, I no we love amanda yeah, but I, it I is objectively a teacher like yeah, yeah. yeah i was like i could see myself probably saying that in like third grade you know <laughs> love amanda on my team was happy i picked you haven't been mad about it definitely if i was on the show you would have heard a <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you would have got one yeah, of those. Yeah, it's a me. real like I'm gonna pick okay. you up and shove you in a locker now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very like, um, teacher, you didn't collect our homework, and everyone's like, shut <laughs> up. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so then we move on to Last Chance Kitchen. Uh, both Alicia and Kalina walk in and we hear very obvious ADR from Tom explaining <laughs> how the show works because certainly they had to gloss over a conversation yeah. where once again they walk in and go, where's David? Who's this guy? What's happening? Oh my gosh. But Every I do, time. I do. So my new theory is Suan was always going to come and that <laughs> David and Suan we're going to duke it out. Then Suan was supposed to make his way through all those. You folks. basically think Suan had to do six challenges instead of five to get back in the competition. Yes. Interesting. Oh, but then the David challenge or like him. Well, against well, I was David saying, was no, no, I was or... saying he, he was supposed to. Yeah, he was supposed to take out all of them, including uh, David. And I think that would have been the surprise where it's like the first last chance kitchen. Normally you have to wait. But now you got to throw hands oh. with Suan. Oh, sure, that makes and sense. And he, yeah. he was too busy, allegedly, 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 because he was afraid of getting the villain Shit, cut. That's right. Okay, I sh- I'll probably <laughs> oh. end up putting this up top because I forgot we have an update on the David Murphy situation. Yeah, you can protect your source, but yeah, yeah. give us the, the rundown I'm, I'm of what you heard. I'm protecting my source, but my source was <laughs> allegedly on. Well, not my source was on set with someone who also allegedly worked on Top Chef, who said that. David kind of got wind that he was getting the villain cut, and that's why he backed out because he was mad about that. But at the end of the day, bro, you are the villain. You you, were, you, <laughs> you came in it's with that just, villain hat. Oh my you came in trying to roast. You was tall. You were very kind of hoity-toity, and you got clipped. And so that's why he got the villain cut. That's reality. Which is crazy of- because. Top Chef isn't even really a villain cut kind of show. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. I mean, like he looked bad, but. Only because he was cocky and didn't cook yeah. well. I yeah. think it would have redeemed him a little bit if he had yeah. done Last yeah. Chance Kitchen, if that is indeed true. You yeah, know? you could have softened up, been right. more personable. Mm-hmm. You would have been more supportive on your way after Suan destroyed you because he's a sniper. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, and then you'd be on the side if you, you know, yeah. he'd be on the sidelines and be cheering on people. So that could you yes. can't be a villain on the sidelines. And my last update, um, something that M has wanted me to get on record on the pod. Is that she thinks Suhan is hot? Um, well, we all do. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah, not yeah. news. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. As soon as he was there, we all just. That's he's a, a hot married man, man everybody. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a married taken. man, but he didn't but say know, he missed his wife. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So here's a point of debate. He yeah. talks extensively about his wife. Yeah. And going back to Chicago, does not actually say I miss my wife. So yeah. my inclination is no points. No points. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Because I think too, he was saying it more in the the idea of like, so I want to win, so I can like yeah. go back exactly. to her with like cash. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he but, wants to provide. Yeah, yeah, be a good yeah. Husband. So, so I almost get the sense that yeah, he like it's not like oh, I don't want to be here anymore. It's right. like yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'll yeah. Go win. Which yeah. does make him hotter that he's yeah. like yeah. I want to provide for my new wife. I want to <laughs> be away and only yeah. providing. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, right, right, right. Okay. All right. Well, M thinks Sue is hot. Great. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel good. You know, we're in them. You know, <laughs> okay. if, if Sue, you know, wants to slide in the DMs. You know, <laughs> go ahead. Just make sure I'm. I got my alinity uh, set up. And oh my god, this sounds alinity. Like uh, the the restaurant he works at. Oh, oh, um, oh, oh good. Oh, where does he Alinia? work? No, no, Alinia. No, no, no. Oh. Alinia is a restaurant in Chicago. That's not the one he works. Yeah, at. He, he works, works at, at the sister restaurant. No, it's uh, quick, right. quick, quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's unrelated. It just sounds like Alinia. Uh, so, bo- no. It's it starts with an A. Oh yeah, Adelina. 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 Yeah, yeah. Adelina. Right, so. in, in, yeah, yeah. I, I and I'm just just, you know, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I felt like when I said hook me up with Adelina, it sounded very transactional, and that's not. <laughs> this uh, is not a quid pro quo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just freaks who like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. This is true. I mean, listen, we wouldn't it, we wouldn't be doing a Top Chef yeah. podcast if we weren't if we weren't fully trying to hustle our way to, into yeah, restaurants. Fully yeah. ready to go to go to these ra- damn yeah, restaurants yeah. right away. We will sell our souls to be invited to any of these restaurants they're like you can get a reservation <laughs> <laughs> no. they have to give us anything yeah. oh, you can God. just walk in yeah. uh, okay the last chance kitchen challenge is to choose a vessel and use that as an inspiration for your dish you have 30 minutes and two people move on so I think we're going to continue to have another three person uh, last chance kitchen next week 
Where should I go from here? We'll pick the um, vessels. I mean, that they pick. yeah. So sure, they they pick out their that. vessels. Alicia picks a scallop dish mm-hmm. uh, or a, a scallop shaped dish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she does the classic cardinal sin of, I know I got out on seafood, but I'm gonna prove I'm gonna prove yeah. I can do she seafood. Do scallops, but they didn't have scallops. They didn't have scallops, so she had to do shrimp. Scallop. Also, uh-huh. I just did was was feeling that she chose one of the smaller ones too, which I'm like. All things considered, even if you make a banger dish, I feel like you're going to get the note that it's such a small dish. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in 30 minutes, maybe it's grading on a curve a little where it's yeah. like, just make me one good oh, bite because sure. yeah. you only have 30 minutes to cook, you know? Right. So she chooses that. Kalina chooses a little three-part dish. Maybe. Because she makes the cardinal sin, I would argue, of saying, I want to do one dish three ways. Mm. I think Tom is famously quoted in one of the earlier seasons as saying, instead of doing a dish two ways bad, do it one way good oh, okay. or something like yeah, that. That's, I, yeah. I feel like I remember that. Yeah. I mean, and I, since you're talking about how small the scallop was like comparatively, it's like, Jesus. And then you're yeah. doing these three yeah. things, um, you know, and we, we see how she pulls it off, but like, that was kind of a shocking, well, you know, it, difference. You know, and, and, but I do want to yeah, talk about how there was a little, uh, little, little kind of shade thrown at that pick by Kalina. Mm-hmm. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And Kalina ends up, winning with it so it's like damn maybe you are the negative nancy in that pairing yeah yeah, yeah maybe i mean maybe. hard to say uh-huh. yeah i i feel like we're endeared to alicia so we don't want to call her a negative nancy yeah i know sure, sorry sure. uh thanks for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for calling or listening if you are we alicia. love you uh sue so picks good. out so a little good. gift box shaped vessel mm-hmm. and he seems a little rattled by the challenge i think that Kalina and Alicia both had the advantage of having come directly from a challenge where they had to take oh, yeah. inspiration from like a thi- an right. object, and and Sue was like, "Wait, what? Uh, food inspired by uh, a thing?" Yeah. But he decides to go with a little gift box, and he does a turf and surf lamb carpaccio on top, and then a grilled halibut and strawberry bisque on the inside. He's a crazy man. Which Tom was really iffy about. Yeah. I shouldn't have said your name. No, no, you should. I, like, I actually... oh, yeah. Tom was on the fence about the strawberry bisque, mm. but he said it wasn't too sweet. So Kalina and Sue end up winning, and Alicia goes home, packs her knives, and leaves. Unfortunate. We'll see Kalina and Sue in next week's Last Chance Kitchen. Let's do our points breakdown. As a reminder, you can find our scoring rules on Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League. This week, there was no quick fire, no points there. Judges table, we'll call Danny and Rossica because they were the only ones on yep. top there. They had the, mm-hmm. the best dishes. And I will also say they both won the elimination challenge. Even though wow. Rossica's the one with immunity, okay. they both win because they, okay. they won as a team. So that's two points there. Last Chance Kitchen was Kalina and Sue. They both get .5 for winning that challenge. Charlie loses .25 for having trouble with his ISI, which means... (laughs) (laughs) You're huffing. Charlie! Charlie! So at the end of this episode, here's our total gainage. Sierra, (laughs) you gain a whopping six and a half points. Feels good. That's, I mean, that's like... Two weeks worth of points. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Danny and Rossica, man. Danny and Rossica. True. Running buddies, running straight to the top. Yeah. yeah. And you had no way of knowing when you drafted both of them that they would be like buddies. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, this yeah. could have been a joint effort where someone else was getting points. In you could have had a, a Kalina Alicia situation where it's like yeah. two strong chefs, butt heads. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm surprised. I would have thought, you know, just not like before the show started airing, I would have thought Danny would be a little bit more like strict because he, his pedigree is like, you know, he's been through all these things. He does the yeah. Bocuse Dior, you know, and same with Rosica too, possibly. But yeah, they're, but they both seem like very cool, chill people. And Danny had great fashion this week too. I forgot to oh, mention. Yeah. Oh, top. Yeah, yeah. Cool hat, cool, loose tee. He's got <laughs> cool style in general. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I got lucky for sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm right in the middle, and that's not saying much because I gained a measly half a point for Kalina in Last Chance Kitchen. Yeah. Iffy, you are in dead last. Losing point two five this week. You have <laughs> taken a step back. <laughs> oh, no. How, how to take one step forward and point two five steps back. <laughs> oh, it's painful. So here's what our leaderboard here's what our leaderboard looks like currently. Iffy, you are in last place with a total of six points. Your total for the whole season is less than the amount of points that Sierra gained this episode alone. (laughs) Yes. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Yep. I am in the middle with 9.25 points. Fine, normal, average. Sierra, you're in the lead with 16.25 points. 
You are over 10 points ahead of Iffy. Wow. Okay, yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, yeah. I, I did lose. I, I lost a person this episode, You did episode, lose a though. person this week. Yeah, yeah that's true. Doesn't bode great for the future. But yeah, yeah I'm glad that, you know, You have top... fewer chefs on your team. Mm -hmm. So technically fewer opportunities to gain points. Right, right. But you have such strong point getters that it almost doesn't matter. Yeah. You, that's you the hope. You have essentially the front runner of the season on your team. Are you talking Roscoe or are you talking Roscoe, Danny? Roscoe, yeah. Roscoe, all the way. I think, I so. think it's looking like they're building a story. And I think um, I think Roscoe is a stellar chef on her own. So I feel very comfortable just saying this. But I feel like it's also like to like the first season of this dope queer chef. And then this dope queer chef wins it. I'm like, you know, we know the chefs are just doing it with their skills. But it is like. A picture perfect story. I will also say, um, Dylan's brought this up before, which is like when Padma was hosting, it was difficult to cook Indian food because That's she true. was so yes. good about it. Like she just knew exactly. No one how... wanted to cook Indian food for Padma. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. didn't want to do it. And then also she could, you know, know what's wrong pretty yes. easily. Yeah. So this is kind of a first opportunity where Padma's not host. Well, but <laughs> yeah. I will also say, and I put this in the hands of two other people of color hosts. We know more than everyone that people from our cultures all have different opinions on the same exact That's true. Yeah. No. Which is where, That's like, true. yeah, this could have been a season where Padma's like, oh, no, this wasn't right. And it's, like, stellar. And it's like, no, it's because... You didn't cook it like Padma's mom made it. Right, no, right. Of course. It's very that's, subjective. That is the nature of culture and how <laughs> it goes. And I think you're right. Just free, free wheel to not have someone's grandma fucking your shit up. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, I think that does it for us this week. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, drop us a line on Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League. If you're doing your own fantasy league, please tag us. We love seeing your team names and stuff. To watch full, unedited episodes, you can check us out on YouTube. Thanks again to my co-hosts, Sierra and Ify. We'll be back on Monday next... Oh, you guys will be back on Monday next oh. week. I'm going to skip a week because I'm going on my air trip. Yeah. Air trip! So I'm excited to hear what you guys put together without yeah. me. Yeah, I'm yeah. Really... We'll, we'll make sure to judge the points a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going like, to come oh, back man. and go, huh. huh. Ify's in the lead by a thousand points? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, you weird. must have not seen the same episode. <laughs> Top Chef Fantasy League is hosted and produced by Mike Cabalon, Sierra Kato, and Ify Wadiwe. Our theme song is composed by Dylan Van Auken. Special thanks to Jarvis Johnson. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube at Top Chef Fantasy League.